you're using to, to, to take those, these, those numbers to call? Uh, you are you talking about expire? Yeah, expired list, or I mean, is there, or are you just kind of going through also your spare pens? Um, what are the locations? Are you just are you pulling numbers off of it, or are expires the only ones? Um, the majority of the contract we call are uh, expire. So right now we're using the Red X. So the majority of number we call uh, from Red X. Uh, sometimes, so for example, uh, before the open house, we'll find the numbers using the geo search, geo search around the homes that we're going to have an open house. And then we're going to text everybody. Um, so last week when we did the open house in El Monte, um, I actually went and uh, distributed uh, about, I think, 50 flyers to all the neighbors. And uh, actually two neighbors wanted to sell. So one neighbor said uh, she was, she, she's in a divorce. So she has like three homes what she wants to sell. Another neighbor, neighbor has one house. She wants to sell her house and move out of state. So like some neighbors, I give them the flyers. They actually, they told me this, they, they asked me, are you Ray? I said, how do you know my name? So basically because we, we, we already text them. We, we text them. We found the numbers on the geo from the geo leads on Red X. So that's another uh, extra database that you pay for. So we, we text them. So when I went to give the flyers to them, they, they, some people, they actually remember me. That's great. I'll have to use that next time. Um, yeah, we have a listing in um, LA that I got that were, I think I'll probably use that texting method and yeah. walk. Right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's very effective. It's uh, because, you know, especially nowadays, um, there is a, you know, a lot of people want to sell their home. So if you're doing the open house, there is a high chance that somebody that's going to the open house uh, uh, is also looking to sell. So since we're still waiting for everybody, so I'm going to talk a little bit about open house. Uh, so open house is actually a very effective way to, to get more listings. Uh, you know, a lot of people think, oh, open house, some agent, they think open house is for, to, to, for an opportunity for you to sell the home. No, it's not. Open house is an opportunity for you to get sellers and buyers. Uh, because uh, the chance of a buyer going to the open house and buy the home is kind of low. So your goal is not to sell them the home that home at the open house, your goal is to book appointment with that potential seller or buyer. So because of that, the script, it should be tailored toward that purpose. So for example, let's say any buyer that came through, number one, we're gonna have ask them to sign to, to, to complete the information. Uh, can you complete this, can you complete this uh, information? Okay. Your name, your phone number. Your phone number. And then we ask them, we ask them uh, do you have a home to sell? Uh, we, want to, we want to figure out the information uh, to the, the, the answer to that question uh, as soon as possible. So if they say they have a home to sell, then we, we'll take note. We'll write it down. Hello, Mawa. So we'll, we'll write it down on the, on the note so that we can follow up later. So like I was saying, so... The great thing about focusing on listing is that you, you can, you are able to leverage listing one listing to get more listings. Um, so if, for example, if you do it on house, you know, just like the example I gave it to you, I found two seller leads. Uh, well, they're not ready to, to move right away, but we, we have the information. So we're going to follow up uh, to, you know, to, to, to book appointment with them later on. Um, yeah, we're going to wait for a couple minutes before everybody come in. So today it's, uh, also related to goal setting, but it's, uh, more of, uh, the actual actions you need to take. 
to uh, to 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 you know to make it work. The the execution of the goal setting, not just the plan, not just the planning. How do you execute the goal setting? How do you write it down? How do you make sure that you can you will do what you said you're gonna do? So how to how to plan for the goal and how to execute the goal. So right now we have 15 participants. Uh, we're gonna wait for for a little bit. Um, then we're gonna go into the details. So, so George, you said that you guys have a new listings, right? Um, yeah. So, and the flyers, because nowadays nobody's print flyers anymore. It doesn't even have to be fancy. I just I actually just printed the black and white flyers from my printer. So. I just, you know, and also when you have a flyer, when you when you when you have an open house, it's much easier to go knock on the door. It doesn't feel like a weird, you know. For example, let's say if you don't have open house, if you try to go knock on some random door, it it, it feels kind of uh, awkward. But the other day when I was doing the giving out the flyers before the open house, it's very straightforward. You know, everybody's like, oh, you guys doing open house? Oh, you know, everybody's very welcoming. Uh, and uh, and a lot of neighbors came to look at a home too. Um, you know, number one, the seller's gonna be happy because so many people came to the open house. Number two, many of those neighbors, they're actually buying. They're not just lookers. Like I had a couple neighbors came through, they had relatives near, live nearby. They have, they want to, you know, stay close to their, you know, parents or their siblings, whatever. Um, so yeah, you gotta, take advantage of the open house, uh, especially in the beginning. So let's say if you're a team leader, maybe you don't need to go to the open house every, every time you do the open house, but at least the first one or two open house, uh, because you know that's when you're able to meet a lot of uh, you know, potential sellers. Um, Okay, we have 15 people, we're 10 plus 10. Uh, so we're gonna wait for a couple of minutes. Uh, in the meantime, anybody have any question, feel free to, to ask. Um, so, hey, George, what else are you guys doing for the open house preparation and uh, for, the, for the open house preparation? Sorry, I just, just literally just got into the office. Sure, sure. Um, so yeah, so this one's going to be an interesting home because it's actually, it's a triplex in Los Angeles. We're currently in the process of trying to get, if if it works, we're trying to get all the tenants. There's three tenants. We're trying to get them on board okay. so we can actually have an open house for the weekend. The, okay. the, the back tenant's not going to be there or it's going to vacate at the end of the sale. So there's one vacancy for sure. Um, so what we're going to be, what we're talking about doing was just just this, our standard open house where we just posted online and we're just going to be there. But we, I was going to walk the neighborhood, but now the way you were explaining it, explaining it, um, it's it's probably beneficial for me to go ahead and knock on these doors and just kind of have some some type of flower uh, flyers and um, start that conversation. So um, so normally at an open house, we just kind of sit there and we just we just kind of wait for people. We'll send out a mail piece. Um, uh, before to let neighbors know that we are having the open house and then we just kind of rely on the online traffic that the MLS usually generates from there and then we try to collect as much information as we can for people yeah I mean whatever you want you can you can mail the mail all the letters too all the just just so just listed postcard too yeah um so did the tenant agree to the open house yet no we're we just got the um just got the listing um a few days ago we're in the process of getting a hold of each tenant so we can like talk we want we want them to be part of the discussion because i don't want them to feel like okay you're, everyone's going to be evicted or everyone's going to be pushed out or um oh people they just don't care about so what we're trying to do is we want to make sure that they're fe they feel comfortable that they have some type of say within um, within the process. So we want to meet with them first to bring them on board so they can allow us to at least open their, open their house. And, um, so we can show people the, the full, the, the, the full 
pro unit. So, not, so that's what we're. And another way to make it easier, just do a short one. Cause uh, yeah, almost all the open house uh, we have been doing, uh, we only advertise for half an hour online. Half an hour. Okay. Yeah. We only advert, we only advertise half an hour online, but if more people come, we're going to obviously, obviously wait for them until, you know, however, however okay. long it takes to do the open house. So this okay. way, this way it's, it's going to be easier for you to convince the tenants instead of three hours, you know, maybe tell them, Hey, just give me a one hour window. That's all I need. So it's, I know it's, it's kind of hard to, you know, to, to work with tenant to have them agree to the open house. So if you tell them, you know, mm -hmm. just one hour window, then it's probably going to be easier. Also, maybe you can give them, yeah. you know, bribe them a little bit, give them like a, some kind of whatever, uh, gift card, whatever. That, yeah. That's what I was going to do. I was going to, we were going to give them uh, some, a little gift card to go somewhere uh, for a nice meal somewhere uh, during the open house. So, so they can just sure. spend time with their family or whoever. But your situation is a little bit better because it's a rental property anyway, right? So as long as the rent is com yeah. comparable to the market rate, then you know they can still stay, they can continue to stay there. It's not like a, it's a single family home, right? It's a it's a, a rental Correct. property anyway. It's a triplex, yeah. So how's their rent? Are, are their rent uh, up to date? The, the the rent? Oh, uh, yeah. The the only the the back the people that are leaving are paying the lowest. Um, they're under. Under, severely under market value, um, but they are they're the ones that are exiting. Um, and then the the other two, they're 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 around market value. They could be a little bit more. Um, so the one, yeah, but the last one is so the one that's, pay, that's the lowest one. The one that's paying the lowest rent, they actually agree to leave. Yes, well, they are related to the to the seller. Oh, oh you got lucky then. Normally they yeah. <laughs> In those situations, they're not going to leave because if they go somewhere else, they're going to pay so much more. Exactly. <laughs> so we got we got lucky. So, um, but yeah, I know because they're they're paying significantly lower, like half the cost of a market rate rent in that area. So. Yeah. Okay, it's a uh, fifteen past ten. We're going to start uh, right now. We have fifteen people, uh, so we're going to start a session. Okay, today uh, is about uh, execution. The, of, of the goal setting. So this you, this is a really good question to ask yourself. What should I do today to become my ideal person tomorrow? So instead of saying, okay, my goal is to do this, do that, da, 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 da. So every morning you can ask yourself, you know, what should I do today to become an ideal person tomorrow? So for example, let's say, okay, I want to become a listing agent selling 50, home, 50 homes a year. Then if you, if you ask, let's say if I'm telling myself this, this, then I know exactly what I need to do, right? So I want to be a listing agent selling 50 homes a year. So what does that mean? That means I got to go go get a listing every single day. So just ask yourself that question. So it's, it's actually very effective uh, because if you ask yourself this question every day, then you know what you need to do every day, which is do something related to getting, related to getting the, a listing, right? Okay, uh, so we're going to... We're gonna go through some uh, basics again, and then we're gonna go into the details. So if you choose the right path, you only need to be right once. Uh, it's really true. So for example, let's say, because we have a lot of agents out there, you know, they're not really focused. Sometimes they're buyer's agents, sometimes they're seller's agents, sometimes they're part-time agents, sometimes they're insurance agents. So if that's you, it's gonna be hard. You're not gonna reach your goal. Um, it's just, you know, you, 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 you need to choose a path. So you need to decide. You need to, you need not only okay i'm gonna be a, i'm just gonna be a real estate agent and on top of that no i'm not just gonna be a real estate agent i'm, I'm gonna be a listing agent so you want to narrow down the the focus and the you know choose the right path um so here are just some recap you know five ways to increase your productivity we've talked about this before you know do not multitask i mean you can multitask task if you it's uh, you if you utilizing different body function uh for example i can walk and listen to audiobook at the same time but you cannot, for example, I cannot, uh, you know, talk, like talk in a session right now and talk on the phone at the same time, right? So set small goals, like, uh, you know, trick yourself into, uh, you know, into getting started, take breaks, take care of the big, focus on big projects. Okay, so this is a reality, reality transfer. We do have, so 
so you do have right so you want to like we talked about earlier right earlier right you're asking yourself so uh what do i need to do to become a listing agent selling 50 homes a year right so that's a b right b is the listing agent do is what do i need to do right have is that once you once you did the first two then you're gonna have the last one right so in order to to make that happen Number one, you want to get a new association, just like what, what we're doing now. So we're we're talking to different people, we're we're uh, you know uh, communicating with with different coach. So we're we're learning a new way to do to 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 get things done. Then you're gonna copy what's done. Like for example, I I we we did the presentation, right? So you gotta copy the presentation. Then you gotta memorize it. So once you memorize it, then you gotta go out there and practice. How do you practice? You gotta market. You gotta go post the you know information about. You. You know, we buy we buy houses. You know, we have buyers for your home. We can get at least five five uh, percent more money for your home. You know, you gotta go out there and market so, so that people can contact you. So you have somebody to practice up, right? Uh, obviously, you wanna practice up on your own. But you know, every time you get to meet a client, that's a, a chance to for you to get better, right? So you once you market and you book the appointment, then you, then you practice every day, every day, every day uh, until you done it successfully. You just need to do it once before you can, you know, you just need to do it once. Once you, once you get it done, once you finish the whole cycle, you market for a listing, you go meet with the seller, you get the listing signed, you get the home sold. Once you complete the whole process, then you know you can do it. Then from there on, it's become much easier. And then you can master, master and internalize and it become your reality. Uh, so I'm going to go briefly through this result generator. First, you got to believe it. Right, then you gotta focus on that one thing, and then you gotta provide something that's different and better. Uh, how to get result? Like we talked about before, right? Do not get get off the phone until your appointment is booked, and focus on the one thing, right? That's gonna get you the outcome. So, it's not to complete everything, but do the one thing that will give you the outcome, right? So increase the standard reward after progress, interaction, no internal conflict. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the goal setting. Uh, we're gonna go through exactly how it works. So this is a simple version. You know, in order to be effective goal setting, you, you gotta you must know your why. So your goal, whatever your goal is, whatever the activity is, is all gonna be aligned with your why. Okay. So you gotta create it. Once you know the why, you set the goal. Then you gotta create the gap, right? Once you create a gap, you gotta bridge the gap, and then you're gonna break down the the activities. So how to achieve the goal? You gotta have a strong why, like I said earlier, right? Raise your standard is very important. Like raise your standard, right? What I mean by raise your standard, for example, let's say if before you were selling 10 homes a year, if you do not raise your standard, if you continue to sell 10 homes a year, then you haven't raised your standard. Then you're not going to change. Then you don't have a gap, right? Let's say now your standard is 50 homes a year and you were selling 10 homes a year. So now your gap is 40 homes. So, so now you need to bridge that gap. How do I sell 40 more homes to get 50 homes, to sell 50 homes, right? So that's what I mean by raise your standard. Uh, also, you can raise your standard uh, by uh, spending the money. Because sometimes, let's say if you're really frugal and if you do not spend any money, then you're thinking, what, what, what am I doing working so hard if I'm not, if I, if I don't need that money? So sometimes, I mean, you do need to be frugal but sometimes you don't want to spend your money so that, for example, let's say there's a car you really, you really want, you can make that your goal. For example, there is a, a hundred thousand dollar car you want. So make that your, your goal. So that way you have something to go after. So for example, if you used to drive a Honda, then raise your goal. Okay, from now on, I'm not going to drive a Honda. I'm, I'm only going to drive a Mercedes or I'm only going to drive, drive a BMW, whatever. So because if you don't raise the standard, what's the sense of making more money, right? <laughs> So that's what I mean. Okay. So we talk about this, establish a habit. You want, you want to trick your mind into doing something easy. Start with a tiny step. Just do this one thing daily, repeat it daily, track the progress, reward daily, celebrate the outcome and add another habit. So this chart is very important. So I, I, so I, I kind of, uh, sometimes I kind of procrastinate. So I actually did, to, did this whole thing last night uh, until 3 a.m. So if you, if you understand this chart, this is all you need to, sec to be successful in your business. So again, you have to ask yourself, right? What should I do today to become, you know, wherever I want to be? Right? So you want to know your why? How do you know your why? 
So first you want to know who you're doing it for, right? And then you want to know what's the reason you're doing it for, then you'll get the why. So once you know the why that you want, you want to do whatever you want to do, then you decide, you make the decision, right? Once you make the decision, then you raise your standard, right? You raise your standard. Before you can raise your standard, you need to remove some negative, like, a, like some, uh, some thinking that doesn't make sense. You want to remove those beliefs. And then you want to believe it. Once you raise your standard, you want to believe the standard. And then you want to tell yourself the right story, right? We talked about this before. So once you're ready to make raise this standard, so all this in between, uh, what you need to do to close the gap. So today, today this is what, where you're at today, right? Today is where you're at right now. So this is after you raise your standard. So this is all the things you need to do in order for you to close the gap. What do you need to do? So there's gonna be activities, right? You can ask, if, you can, if you're just gonna sit, home, sit at home and talk, you're not gonna close the gap. The only way you can close the gap is you gotta work, right? You gotta put in the activities. So the activities is just me measured by numbers. So we're gonna talk about that, which is goal setting, right? We're gonna break down the goal, right? So activity, activities is measured by numbers. And then how do you breach, how do you close the gap? Is you gotta, you know, uh, you gotta do it correctly. For example, on your personal aspect, you gotta, you know, you gotta master yourself. You gotta control yourself personally, physically, emotionally. So that, that's what I, what I mean. And also you need to take care of your health, right? Because without energy, you cannot do any of this. You gotta have energy, you gotta be healthy in order for you to close the gap. And then on the business part, uh, business part is, pay, is basically two major components, marketing and sales. You market, once you get a client, then you sell, then you close the, the client. That's all it is. That's all there is for the business. And then, then okay. once you, once you, somebody's talking now. So once you, you, your business grow, because uh, initially you, it's just, it's just gonna be yourself. You're just gonna be a self-employed person, but in which eventually you're gonna be turning into a business. So once you turn into a business, then you're gonna have a team, right? How do you have a team? You're gonna hire them, you're gonna train them, and you're gonna motivate them, right? Uh, and also the financial part. So you gotta you know watch out the at cash flow and the expenses, because if you don't have the cash flow, you cannot sustain. You cannot have continue to have this business, right? So that's how you bridge the gap. This is all you need to do to bridge the gap between where you are today versus the goal you want to, where you want to be after the, the standard is raised, right? Uh, do you guys have any questions so far? So on the right-hand side, so it's kind of like a, the habit creation. So you wanna have the new association, you wanna have the new habits, close the gap, align the action, so everything we're doing here in between, between the like around the rulers, uh, uh, must be aligned with the why, right? Uh, for example, let's say if your why is to, so you had you figure out the why and you made the decision and you raise your standard. Okay, you, let's say let's say if your standard is, is to sell fifty homes, then then everything here, the activities, the personal, the health, the business, the team, the financial. Everything here is aligned with, uh, you know, uh, achieving this goal of uh, selling 50 homes. So you start with tiny steps, you daily re reward yourself daily, and you improve your skills and you persist till you win. Okay. So this framework is very important. Uh, it's this, the, this is the logic behind the goal setting. Uh, the logic behind the goal setting is you got to know the why. Why you're doing it, then you want to make the decision and you want to remove all you know negative thoughts. You want to believe yourself, you want to tell yourself the right story, and then you're convinced to, to, that you're gonna go after this new standard. And uh, if you have a new standard, then you're gonna have a gap between where you are today with, with the new standard. Then these are all the act this in between is what you need to do to close the gap. Okay. Anybody have any question on this on this on this uh, frame? Okay, we're gonna go go on. Okay, so again, this is a daily master, right? So this is the personal part. 
You want to make sure you as a person, you're 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 on 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 the spot. You're doing correctly. You're doing what you're supposed to do as a person, as an individual. So you want to meditate. You want to assert. You want to see it, visualize it. You want to take action. That's gonna bring you closer to your goal. And you want to exercise. You want to refocus. This is what you do as a person on a personal level. So this is your daily health activities, right? If you because you're doing this because you want to make sure you are in your best health and you want you want to have the energy. If you don't do it, you're not gonna have the energy. Okay. So you want to meditate for your mind, for your body. You want to eat right, sleep right, exercise right. For your spirit, you want to learn, you want to entertain and chat. So it's very important important to learn. So every day, you know, I when I walk, I listen to audio books. So I also, you know, after I, let's say if I call two hundred numbers today, I'm gonna take a break, watch some movie, right? To entertain, relax, and also you want to communicate. You know, people have a need to communicate, chat with your friend, talk to your family, whatever, right? So you want to make sure all those needs are, are met: mind, body, spirit, right? Okay. Uh, because if any of these needs is not met, you're not gonna do anything. You're not gonna be productive. Even if you set a goal, you're not gonna go after it. The only way you're gonna execute your goal is when your mind is right, when your body feel good, and when your spirit it's a uh, it's a uh, in place. So here's the daily business activities. So like we talked about earlier, right? For the business, it's basically two parts, marketing and sales, right? For the marketing, these are the three options that you can use to get list, to get leads. Number one option, it's just, it just basically sweat and, right? sweat and labor. Basically, you make, the, you make the call. You don't spend any money. You, you contact 100 sellers a day, right? You're just using your energy. To, to, to get to get the marketing done. Or, or this is a, another way is also you are using your sweat and the labor. You post ads on social media, post 100 ads a day. Because we need, to, uh, we need enough uh, leads to, you know, to make it work. If you only have li limited leads, you're not gonna have you know, enough leads to, to pick and choose you know, to, to, um, who to work with. So you need to have enough leads. Or another way to do it is just spend money. Just spend hundred dollars advertise each day. Uh, it could be you know you, YouTube. Uh, it could be Zillow. It could be Realtor.com. It could be uh, Facebook. It could be TikTok. It could be Instagram. So these are three options that you can utilize to to market your business. Okay. So this is what you need to do daily on a daily basis as far as business is concerned. And then. So pretty much every day you need to do two things, marketing and sales. So once you finish the marketing part, then you're gonna do the sales, right? You're gonna go, you're gonna book an appointment. For example, you market it, then you're gonna get a call or you, you talk to hundred people. Some people want to meet with you, then you're gonna make an appointment, right? So once you make an appointment for tomorrow or the day after, then you're gonna have, then you're gonna be able to have an appointment to go to tomorrow or the day after, right? Uh, or if you make, for example, or you made an appointment the day before for today, then you're gonna be able to have an appointment to go to today, right? So every day, as far as business activities is concerned, two things, marketing and sales, marketing and sales, marketing and sales. Let's say if you only gonna focus on sales, you don't do marketing, then you have nobody to sell to, right? So it's very important you gotta do marketing every day, right? For example, last night, I posted a couple of YouTube videos about uh, uh, the right pricing strategy for your home, uh, the, the secret of a photo strategy for selling your home. So I put that on uh, YouTube. I also made it into a video on, on WeChat and I on the WeChat public account. So I've, I've, I, 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 re I sent that WeChat video to like, uh, I think 50 groups. So each group have, uh, has about, I think three to 500 people. So let's say just 300 people, 50 group, that's uh, 15,000 people. So that's, you know, that's what I mean by marketing. It depending on, it's depending, I mean, if you have a staff member that's doing it for you, then you wanna, you want to, you know, market on all platform. Because remember, you, you wanna have, you know, maximum exposure. You wanna have omnipresence, right? So as far as marketing is concerned, as far as marketing is concerned, you cannot play small. You have to play big because uh, 
is a numbers game, right? Let's say if you market to 10,000 people, maybe 100 people is going to reply to you or 10 people will reply to you. So let's say if you market to 1,000 people, 100 people reply, uh, see you, uh, 100 people see your ads, that's like 1%, um, uh, 1%, right? Is that right? Then out of those 100, 100 people, maybe you're going to get to talk to five people. Out of those five people, maybe you're going to you know, be able to book one appointment. So it's a numbers game. So that's why your marketing needs to be really um, aggressive. Uh, you cannot think small. If you think small in marketing, you're not going to have enough base to, to talk to, right? Okay, so this is the yearly business planner. Let's say if you're selling 50 homes a year, I cannot believe it, man. Now the average home price is $800,000 in Los Angeles. That's so crazy. <laughs> Okay, anybody have any, any, anybody else have any questions so far on the daily business activities, on the daily health activities, on the daily master, and also on this chart? Okay, if not, we're gonna move, move forward. Okay, uh, so this is a yearly business plan. So this is just an example. You can, you can, you can trick the numbers according to what you want, okay? So let's say if my goal is to sell 50 homes a year, uh, so if the average price is $800,000, so that means uh, if I reach this goal this year in 2022, then my total volume is, uh, would be 40 million, right? If your total value, value is 40 million, then times 2.5% uh, commission, then your GCI will be $1 million. Then your GCI will be uh, $1 million, okay, $1 million. So this is, this is the basic format to reach 1 million. Uh, to reach 1 million, what you need to do? That means you need one at least one appointment a day, right? That means you need at least one listing appointment a day. So that means you need at least five appointments a week, uh, basically one a day, five a week, right? Then five a week times 40 weeks, that's assuming you work 40 weeks and the, uh, the other eight weeks you're on vacation, whatever. So five appointments a week, 40 weeks, that's 200 appointments, right? 200 appointment booked. Let's say out of the 200 appointment, uh, you meet 140 seller. Out of the 140 sellers, you sign half of the, the presentation. You sign, you, sign, uh, um, you sign 70 listings. Let's say out of the 70 listings, you sell 50 homes. So this number, it, it's, it's different for everybody. Uh, depending on your skill level, if you if you have a higher skill, maybe you can sign. You know, I mean, it's it's kind of I don't know. Maybe somebody can sign 100% of the listings. Uh, I cannot. So you know, you, you can tweak it. This number is just a. This is just an example for you. Uh, obviously, if you can, if you can, if your plan and the goal can go according to this, um, like this 100%, then you're gonna reach your goal. If you, if you really can carry out this option, this plan, you know, exactly as it's written down here, then you're gonna make a million dollars for sure. So we'll talk about this. So all this- That's like 50 contacts a day. Sorry, what was that? <clears throat> no, I was just saying, that's like 50 contacts a day. Yeah, so- it just depends. Maybe maybe fifty, maybe a hundred. So so you, if your goal, you know, it's so if your goal is to to get a one appointment a day, then and by the way, if you make it non negotiable, then you're gonna you're gonna reach this goal for sure. Well, it's it's like number, yeah, yeah, it's all the numbers game. If you if you really tell yourself, hey, no matter what, I'm gonna get an appointment a day. If really if you re if you can really prom make that promise come true, you will make a million dollars. It's like 12 contacts an hour. Huh? What's it's like that? 12, it's like 12 contacts an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all in the numbers. So that's why the goal, goal setting is so important. That's why we have another session, separate session, to talk about exactly how you set the goal. Uh, because, uh, you know, if you don't write it down, if you don't set the goal, if you, have, if you don't know what you're going after, if you don't have something to measure and track, if you don't have anything to track with, then you're not going to reach the goal. Um, so, so we we'll go back to this chart again. You know, you got you want to know why you. I mean, it's a lot of work, right? It's not easy. It's not like a, you know sitting on a couch and watching TV. 
So it's a lot of work. So that's that's why you must be motivated. You must have the right why. If you're not motivated, if you don't have the right why, you're not gonna do any of this. This is a lot of work. Okay. <laughs> so if you have the right why, uh, so I'll give you my why. Um, so I bought a home and I have some investment properties. So I haven't bought a home for my parents yet. So my why now is buy a home for my parents. So that's a very strong motivator for me. Um, you know, who, that's the who, right? The who is my parents. The what is uh, because my parents, they're in their 80s. So, you know, they don't have, you know, that's, they, they're pretty old. So I want to make sure they can enjoy as much as they can. So it's getting me very motivated. So that's the what, right? So the what and the who, that makes my why. So this is the right, this is, a, I, I, this is the right why for me. So I'm very motivated. So you need to find a why for yourself too. Because if you do not, if you not know you, what your why is, if you do not have a clear why, you're not going to do any of this because it's a lot of work. Only if you're really motivated, only if you have a clear why, then you're going to do this. Okay. So once you have the clear why, then you, you decide, okay, here's some, how I'm going to reach this why, right? Then you're going to raise your standard and uh, you're going to close the gap by, you know, through the activities was the numbers game by, you know, taking care of yourself, personal issue, your personal department, your health department, and uh, taking care of business, marketing and sales. And uh, once you grew, uh, once your team grew, then you, you got to hire, train and motivate. And then you got to take care of your finances, your financials. Um, so, Actually, the ultimate goal, a lot of people don't talk about it, but uh, the ultimate goal is a lot of realtors, they're helping people to buy and sell home. They're helping investors to buy and sell home, but they don't invest in real estate themselves. That's wrong. Okay. So it doesn't matter who, what level you are in, you're at, doesn't matter who you are, your ultimate goal should always be investing in real estate yourself. How do, you, how do you invest in real estate? By closing the gap. So you can increase your income, commission income. So you can use the commission income to buy investment real estate. Because if you don't, it's gonna be a rat race. You're just gonna stay on a rat race. You never get off. If all you do is try to make a buck, make a commission. If that's all you do every day, you make a commission, you, you, you spend the money, you make another commission, you spend the money, you make another commission, you spend the money. And before you know it, you're, 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 you're about to retire and you have nothing to show for. So, um, so I, str I strongly believe in this. A lot of people don't talk about it, but I strongly believe in this investment. You want to get your, you want to get your first house as quickly as possible, as soon as possible, do whatever it takes to get your first property, you know, 3% uh, down FHA, whatever, getting your first property. And make it a goal to so we're gonna so we talk about different goals, right? We talk about daily master planning, we talk about the daily health activities, mind, body, spirit, because this is very important too. Like we talked about last time, the, the triangles, right? Remember the multiple triangles. If your mind is not in the right place, if your body is not healthy, if your spirit is not ready, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be willing to do any of this. Okay. So that's why it's very important. You want to have a daily health activities and also, you know, your daily business activities, marketing and sales, marketing and sales. You cannot sell if you don't market. You have nobody to sell to, right? Every day, marketing and sales, marketing and sales. You got to have a, you got, you, when, you talk, when you talk about marketing, you cannot think small. You got to think big, think big. You cannot think small, okay? Then your year, yearly business plan, you know, how many appointments you need to have. And the investment goal, have an investment goal. So at this, I have an investment goal too. So um, for that's for example, this is an example, right? Let's say if your, your first investment goal is to have a $10,000 rental income every month. Uh, so let's say if, uh, if every door, every unit, you get $1,000 rent, that means you need 10 doors a year. You need to have 10 units a year, right? So let's say, uh, ten, if you get a, a $10,000 a month in rental income, then you're going to have a, 
uh, uh, let me see, a million dollars, a uh, million dollars. So basically what that means, uh, um, for you have $10,000 income, the property that's gonna generate you the $10,000 income is gonna be either $1 million or $2 million. This is a very, this is a very aggressive uh, example because in California, you're not gonna be able to get a rental property for 10% cap rate. Uh, you can only get 10% cap rate out of state. Uh, so let's say in California, if you're gonna buy something that's gonna get you $10,000 monthly income, uh, most likely you're gonna pay $2 million because that would make it 5% cap rate. But if you look for out of state, maybe you can get it for $1 million. So let's say if you're buying it for $1 million, if you put 20% down, that means you need to have $200,000 down payment. That means you need to make maybe at least $400 commission because you have expenses. Uh, so that means if you want to reach this investment goal of getting $10,000 income a year, you can, by the way, this is only possible if you invest out of state. It's not possible to do it in California. The only way it's possible to do it in California is if you're doing Airbnb, okay? So we, again, we're talking about the investment goal, right? So. $10,000 monthly income. Uh, if you do Airbnb locally or if you invest out of state, maybe you can achieve this, this, this passive income goal with a, a million dollar property. Uh, so if you want, if you need a million dollar property to achieve this $10,000 income, then you need at least 20% down payment, which is $200,000. Uh, to get $200,000 as a down payment, you need to probably make at least $400,000 in GCI, gross commission income, okay? So this is the year. Anybody else have any questions so far on what we just talked about? Okay. So this is the year one financial goal. How many homes sold? What's my annual GCI? Uh, this is the investment goal. Units owned, rental income, monthly income. I mean, either monthly or yearly. So these are your expenses, marketing expenses. That's, that's probably the biggest expense, staff expenses, if you're hiring people and the lease expenses. Most of you probably don't have a lease yet because you, you're under a company and you want to have a reserve, like a rain, rainy day account. So this is your financial goals. One year, year one financial goal, year three financial goal. Then you're going to have a lifetime financial goal. How many rental units you want to own? How many rental, how much rental in, income you want to have each month, uh, your expenses. And the personal goals too. So, you know, goals regarding, this is just some example, you know, each one person have different personal goal. Maybe it's for your spouse, for your kids, travel, friends, relatives, hobby, skills, education, whatever. Uh, we're talking about goal setting, right? So, yeah. Uh, okay, today we went through pretty fast. Uh, right now it's 10.46. So we finished it in about 30, 36 minutes. Anybody else have any question on what we went through today? Today is basically the execution, right? The execution of the goal. Right. Yeah, go ahead. I had a question. Um... Before COVID, I had a I had a goal to like farm San Clemente, like Talega area. I don't know if you know where that's at. Um, the, and I'm kind of trying to figure out. Um, I know I need to budget for like three years, and with traditional farming methods. Um, what are you talking about? Postcards. Yeah, so postcards, and then, um, you know, online lead generation, things like that. Okay. How much would you figure uh, would that amount to? So that's the thing, because with postcard, there's no... It's like 1% return, I think, or half percent return. But it's, it's branding recognition and all that. Um, so here's what you want to do. Because uh, the planning you're talking about, it's, uh, it's very unpredictable. Because mm -hmm. uh, there's... A, it's not a hundred percent that you put in the money in, then you're gonna get the outcome. Mm -hmm. Because the, you know, especially nowadays, the success rate for postcards kind of low, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is to to make it more predictable. Is to hustle 
really hard to and to get a listing first. Once you get a listing, then you send the just sold postcard because the, re the, the response to that is going to be much higher. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually what Quant was talking about because I was uh, chatting with him about postcard strategy too. Mm -hmm. uh, because the problem with postcard is uh, you need to have a deep, deep pocket and you're willing to spend money consistently. Yeah, I understand. You understand? I used to work at Caldwell Banker. Yeah. And they uh, really emphasize the farming methods. Because, and, yeah, yeah, but the issue with that is it needs to yeah. be consistent. You need to be able to sustain. Yeah, three uh, years. Three yeah. Years. yeah. So if you're talking about postcard and uh, you, you cannot play small, it's like another marketing that you cannot play small. So if you cannot play small, depending on how big of a market you're, you're prospecting toward to, you're looking at at least $5,000 a month minimum if you don't have any type of meaningful return. Yeah. So, you know, 5,000 a month, that's 60 grand a year. Three years, that's a, that's a hundred. 200,000. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so I was thinking about, you know, implementing the postcard program. Mm -hmm. Cause I live in Girl Belinda and it seems like the top agents in the area, like, um, have been here and they're consistent postcard marketers i get their postcards like once or twice a month well uh, yeah. because because they already established a base yeah yeah because they, they already established a uh a a a constant income where the income can sustain that spending i, I see that and i also see uh young other people like from first team like first team is a big office in this area but they're breaking into certain areas of your belinda but they're able to do it. So if you don't start somewhere, it's, you know, you're never going to start. Okay. Right. What you can do is, what you can do is, uh, so sometimes I do this too. Sometimes, you know, I walk every day as I was sharing with you guys. I walk every day. So I walk uh, 10,000 10, steps a day, 5,000 steps in the morning, 5,000 steps in the, mm -hmm. in, the, in the evening. Um, I, when I'm walking, I just. Uh, you draw I look at some, I find, I look for ugly houses. So sometimes yeah. I go knock on the door. Sometimes I just leave my, my business card. Yeah. Uh, let me, I have a business card. Let me, okay. Give, give, give me a couple seconds. Let me get business card. Let me show you. Okay. Hold up. Because what I was trying to figure is like a less expensive way of doing this. You know? Yeah. So that's what I mean. So yeah. you can start by, cause here's the thing. Okay. There's a, hold on. Let me, there's two ways to market, right? Uh, we talked about this here before. Mm -hmm. We talked about this here before. There's three ways to market. Number one, swear and sweat, sweat and tears. You work. You either yeah. call or you knock or whatever, right. right? Yeah, yeah. Number two is you do it online. You 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 advertise online for free. Yeah. Social media, Instagram, Facebook, right? Number three is pay money. So. Um, so the number three is basically also means postcard too. postcard market on social media, right? So, so you can start here because unless you have a established, uh, you know, consistent stream of income, if you don't have that yet, and you're going to start the postcard campaign, it's going to put a lot of pressure on you. Well, I thought about doing a lot of drops, like, um, because I used to door knock a lot, also, and so. You know, oh, another thing you can do. Like oh, another thing you can do if you really want to do if you really want to do postcard mailing, just uh maybe do like the the EDD EDD. EDM. Just, yeah. Yeah, in a smaller area. Mm -hmm. So that so here's the key. So a lot of realtors um struggle with is uh, the the unfocused. So when you're unfocused, it's really hard. You, mm -hmm. For example. You, you don't know if you're a listing agent or buyer's agent. You don't know if you're going to focus in Rio Belinda or you're going to focus in uh, Orange County or in City of Orange. Mm -hmm. So just pick a small area. Uh, maybe you're going to have a small, like a budget campaign, just EVM, maybe on one or two routes. And maybe you're going to, it's going to cost you maybe $300, $500. And then you walk that, you walk that same neighborhood. That way, you know, then you, you, you're probably going to get more. Just like what we talk about, uh, I don't know if you were here, when we talk about the marketing for open house. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Because those people, if someone had knocked on their door, they might have listened to the house. Yeah. So, so to answer your question, um, I would say do not put too much pressure on yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you if you uh, really pressure yourself into uh, you know in investing a big budget for postcard mailing, uh, it's it, it's gonna put, a lot of, put what I'm saying is gonna put a lot of pressure on you. No, I, I know. Before I used to be in coaching with Debbie DeGroat, and uh, when I was a Coldwell Banker, mm -hmm. and uh, she said you had to have a war chest, right? Mm -hmm. Before you start to do that. And um, she said, just, she suggested like a war chest, at least $50,000, you know, in the bank reserve before you even start. You just, know? just, just start with the sweat and the tear. Yeah. Just, yeah. just start with sweat labor first. Just, mm -hmm. just either knock on the door or mail, or, or you can, oh, okay. Another thing you can do is you can narrow down the focus. So instead of mailing to everybody EDDM, maybe you can mail to absentee owner. All, that's a good idea. That's yeah, good. Just, idea. You want yeah. to narrow it down, right? You want you want it to be very specific. That's how you can lower your cost and also be more efficient at the same time. Some plant some flags in the area. Yeah. So, for example, okay, I'm only gonna focus in uh, absentee owner. So, uh, for example, uh, which zip code do you live in? Which zip code? Zip code. I live in your nine nine two eight eight six. Okay, so I'm only gonna focus in nine two eight eight six. I'm only gonna focus in the absentee owners here, uh, because right now you know a lot of people that's uh, investors they want to sell because they know the price is high. So yeah, very high. Or you can even narrow down a little bit more. You say, okay, I'm only gonna focus in this zip code. I'm only gonna focus in this zip code. Uh, only the absentee owners. I'm only gonna focus in the absentee owners that owns multifamily. Or like two bedroom, two baths, things like that. Multi-family, like multi-family yeah. units. Yeah, two yeah. units, three units, four units, yeah. five units, ten units. So because here's the thing, you wanna you want to be different and be, because let's say if you're doing the same thing with everybody else, like you were talking about, oh, so there is a successful agent, she's already sending postcards in, in this neighborhood. You cannot do the same thing as what she's doing. Because if you're doing the same thing as she is doing or he is doing. Number mm -hmm. one, you don't have as much budget as that person have, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that right there, you already lost. You already lost, right? Mm -hmm. And number two, and number two, it's uh, um, they 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 have already been doing it for so long. You know, they already have the name recognition. You cannot beat them. So the only way you can beat them is that you you are focusing on different niche. Yeah, like absentee owner, you can plant your flag in their neighborhood. Yeah, maybe you know, and they're in their farm. Yeah, absentee owner in this yeah. zip code that owns multifamily. So if you yeah. focus on that, that's a totally different niche with, uh, from what that person is already doing in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, because like when you're calling, I've, I've, if you don't, the day that you stop calling is the day you start, you, you don't get any business. And um, so like, like what we're talking about here, right? Yeah. You gotta do either one of these three things every day. Yeah. Yeah. Either you gotta call or you gotta knock. Sometimes I don't really, I don't really re recommend knocking doors is because it's, it's very ineffective. It's too time consuming. But if you're wa already walking, exercising, then you can try to knock on doors. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I leave a business card. So I made a business card. I don't have it here with me. Uh, I made a business card uh, on one side. It says get at least 5% more money for your home. So on the other side, then I would have my business car. So sometimes when I go walk in the neighborhood, I just leave the car out, out, outside. Mm -hmm. um, so. That makes sense. Yeah, every day you got to do this. You got to pick one. Either you make 100 calls or you got to post 100 free ads or you got to hire somebody to, to post 100 free ads for you or you got to pay money to advertise. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Because every day you need to have something running. If you don't have something running, you don't have you. If you don't have marketing, you're not gonna get the appointment. You're not gonna get the presentation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ray, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. So about the postcard, uh, about the flyer, actually, and uh, you said uh, uh, before open house is uh, will be good to hold the flyer and to knock the door to talk to the neighbors. Yeah. Um. 
I'm wondering, like, uh, normally we don't have flyer when all the pictures ready, right? Uh, like when we finish all the preparation and the staging and then took picture and then second day, for example, the picture came out. But normally at that, for example, if we took picture on like a Tuesday and a Wednesday, the picture picture is out. And, uh, and then if I go to print flyer, they're going to take about three days. But normally seller want to do the open house in that weekend or start the marketing or, you know, put on market right away. So okay. uh, like we talked about earlier, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. So what I do is usually when I go take the listings, Mm -hmm. I, once I sign the listings, then I take some photo with my phone first. Okay. Uh, so that way, that way, like you were saying, because usually the seller, they want to be done quickly, right? Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, I take the photo with my phone first, mm -hmm. and then I'll use my photo to pre-market. Okay, I see. Uh, and for the flyer, you don't need to have the perfect picture. You don't need to have all the pictures. Or you, just, you just need one picture. Mm, okay. So, you can take a because nowadays the iPhone quality is pretty good. So mm -hmm. you can just take a you know a picture from the outside at different mm. angles, find the best picture and just use that for the flyer. Okay, so you normally you think it's still good to print the flyer instead of like a I mean the to make the flyer professional pr flyer instead of like a printout from printer, right? The, no, the flyer doesn't even need to be professional. I actually print the flyer flyer by my with my with my printer. <laughs> I actually, okay. I actually printed black and white because I haven't cheated okay. save money. It's okay. A, it, it, I mean, something is better than nothing. That's the thing, right? Do not try to be mm -hmm. A lot of people, they try to be perfect. Oh, I got to have the professional photographer take a picture. I got to mm -hmm. Photoshop the picture. Then I got to mm -hmm. set the printer to make the flyer. Don't do that. You, mm -hmm. you, like you say, you don't have time to do that. Just uh, let me see if I can find my flyer. Let me see. I don't know. Um, here. But anyway, so I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. send the, I'll, yeah. send, I'll send the flyers to you guys and I'll also send the postcard, I, I mean, the business card to you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. So so for the flyers, I just I just made the flyer on my own. I just printed it and I just, okay. I, it's, it's black and white, actually. I just, uh, you know, they don't care if it's black and white. or if I know, they just want to know the information. So you can just use that to knock the door and talk to neighbors. Yeah, right? exactly. Okay. It, it gives you something to, it's a, it's a talking subject right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it gives you something to talk about and uh, mm -hmm. it, it legitimizes you as a an, as a as a you know not a criminal uh, because nowadays uh -huh. yeah nowadays, mm -hmm. everybody is very you know uh cautious because the you know what's going on in the economy and also the the safety issue so mm -hmm. if you have the flyer then you know and you're talk, telling them about the open house then it's a uh, it's very easy to approach yeah Okay, so you said you actually first try to text the neighbor. Yeah, neighbors. we text everybody. We text, everybody. Okay. We text them, uh, mm -hmm. then, uh, then, we, then we give them the flyers. Mm -hmm. uh, and some people, they say, oh, are you ready? I said, how do you know, how do you know me? They say, oh, you text me before. So mm -hmm. I, I, didn't text, I didn't text them, my, my teammate texted them. So for the texting, mm -hmm. what we do is we get the more phone number from the geo leads. Mm -hmm. uh, we get the phone number from the geo leads, then we use a a uh, texting service. I forgot the name. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch. Just search on Google. So we, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a minimum fee. It's like maybe, I don't know, $20 a, a month or something. Then mm -hmm. you can, for, for example, let's say if you have uh, 100 numbers, mm -hmm. put in the text, say, folks, for example, okay, coming soon, up house today, uh, best value, whatever. Then you just text mm -hmm. to everybody, broadcast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, We're two past 11, anybody else have any questions? So yeah, so for the goal setting, um, let me go back to, uh, since it's kind of complicated, I'm gonna try to you know, re reiterate this again. Uh, so ultimate goal is purchase investment property. I think this should be the goal for everybody. Uh, I don't know. Some people may be thinking I'm 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 uh, insisting what I believe onto everybody, but if you truly want to be financially free, uh, and if you truly want to provide a good living, uh, 
good life for your family and your loved loved ones, you need to your ultimate goal should always be investment yourself, not just you know be a realtor and uh, keep selling homes. Uh, because if you do not invest in real estate, then you know you're just gonna be on the red race in the red race. You're never gonna get out. Uh, so, but to, before you invest, then you gotta you know have some money, right? So to get that money, then you gotta figure out the why, who you're doing it for, what's the reason you're doing it. Once you figure out the why, then you decide make make the decision. Once you make the decision, then you raise the standard. For you to believe the standard. For you to believe the new standard, you need to remove all negative thoughts. You gotta believe in it. Then you gotta tell yourself the right story. Then you gotta close the work every day to close the gap. So this is where you are today. This is the new standard. In order to close this gap, you need to have the numbers, right? The activities. You know how many phone to call, how many numbers to market, whatever. Then you gotta take care of yourself personally, mind, body, spirit. Because if you do not. If you do not have the, if you're not taking care of yourself, mind, body, spirit, if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not going to do any, any of the other stuff. Okay. So health, make sure you exercise. Then you, once you've taken care of this, your health, your personal, then you will be willing to do the business, do the work. What's, what's the work in the business you're doing? Marketing and sales, marketing and sales, marketing and sales. You got to play big. In the marketing, you got to play big. If you play small, you, you you're not gonna have enough base to, to of customers to work on, and then once you grow from a you know self-employed person, you're gonna grow into a business. Once you grow into business, then you're gonna hire, train, and motivate. You're gonna get your team, and uh, obviously while you're doing all this, you gotta have the cash flow. Like uh, Edward was talking about earlier about postcard, right? The whole time we're talking about the discussion, the topic of the discussion is actually about cash flow. How are you gonna be able to sustain? If you're gonna, if you have to spend five thousand dollars a month for postcard, then you must have the cash flow, right? If you're gonna spend five thousand dollars a month for the postcard, that means you you need to have at least minimum ten grand coming in every year, every every month. If you do not have a ten thousand dollar coming in minimum every month, there's no way you're gonna be able to consistently, you know, spend five thousand dollars a month on the postcards. So that's where that's where the cash flow came in. Okay. So how do you make sure that cash flow is there? It's by by you know by doing this. This is how you reach. Make sure you have the cash flow. Is to you know make it non-negotiable. One appointment a day. One appointment a day. Non-negotiable. One appointment a day. Five appointments a week. Forty weeks a year. Two hundred appointments booked. Out of the two hundred appointment booked, you meet maybe one hundred forty. Out of the 140 you meet, you maybe you sign half of the sellers. You sign the listing contract. Out of the, go ahead. Great. How do you deal with the repetitious boredom? Because sometimes you're on the phone for five, six hours calling. I mean, I've been there, done that. But you just get bored, you know, focusing on a screen. Okay. Right. No. When you're, sometimes when I'm calling before, uh, if nobody pick up, you can actually do other stuff. Watch TV. You can, you can watch movie, yeah. watch TV. <laughs> Yeah. I said before. Yeah. Yeah, I still have to call. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Sometimes yeah. you because sometimes I was on the phone trying to do the call to expire. Yeah. Nobody pick up. So I just watch a movie or watch TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I get it. All right. Yeah. You can just uh you, you know you gotta because a lot of times you gotta be efficient and at the same time you want to make yourself feel good. If yeah. you don't feel like I was saying, if you do not feel good, you're not gonna do it. Yeah. You have to enjoy what you're doing. If you do not enjoy what you're doing, there's no way you're going to force yourself to be able to do something every day that you hate. That's the key. It's, the, the key is sustainable. Uh, it's got to be sustainable. You got to be willing. Personally, you, 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 you got to be willing to do it every single day, day in and day out. And how do you make sure that happens? It's what we just talked about. You, know, you got to make sure your, you, 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 your you know, mind is in the right place. Your body is healthy. Your spirit. This, this is what we, this is what I'm talking about, right? Because you were saying, uh, how, how do you deal with you know calling for four or five hours expired and not getting not getting anything and getting bored? This is what you do. You can listen to audiobook at the same time. You can entertain, like watch TV, watch a movie at the same time. So that's why I put this here: the body, mind, spirit. Any one of this department not working right, you will not do. 
any of this. The only way you'll be wanting to do any of this to get the money to do the investment, it's, it's when you are right in all these three departments, mind, body, and spirit. That's why I put it here. That's why I make it daily health activities. That's why I put it here. Because if you do not have this, you will not do the work. Like we talked about earlier before, right? It's not about whether you have the time to do it or not. It's whether you are willing to do it or not. Like last night, last night I was a, <laughs> so this, this whole slide, I also, I, again, I did it last night, like until 3 a.m. <laughs> because before that, I was not willing to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> I have time. But I'm just not doing it because you know I was like uh, like uh, watching TV or like like chatting with people you know go go take a walk. I don't want to do it. R remember, most people do not get what they want, do not get the outcome. It's not because they do not have the time. Everybody have the same time. Is that most people are not willing to do it? Okay, how do you make sure you're willing to do it? Is by taking care of of this three department. Your mind's got to be in the right place. Your body is gotta be healthy. Your spirit is gotta be in the right place. You know, I think you're right because like uh, maybe 10, 12 years ago, I was really in really good shape, right? Yeah. And so then calling for six hours is no big deal. Yeah. You know, because you can, you have more stam stamina, put it that way. Yeah, so that's why that's why I'm talking about body. Yeah. You, you cannot let your body decline, you cannot. You know, that's why it's so important we talk about the why and the decide. Because when you have a strong why, and if you decide, if you need to bridge this gap, then you need to get your body, your health in place. Mm. It's, 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 it's going to help you all around, you know, yeah. with every aspect of your life. Because if you do not have the health, if you do not have the stamina, you're not going to be able to sustain. You're not going to be able to do any other stuff. Yes. Yeah. If your if your mind, body, spirit is not right, if your health is not right, you're not gonna do the business. You're not gonna market. You're not gonna sell. It's not about the time. It's about whether you wanted to do it or not. You gotta position yourself so that you're willing to do the work every day. It's not about how long how long you work. It's about putting yourself in the right condition every single day. So you're willing to do that one thing that's gonna lead you to that one outcome you want. That's all you need to do. It's not about doing as much work as possible. It's not about helping, you know, making sure everybody's happy. It's not about that. It's about make sure you're happy, make sure you're healthy and make sure you're spiritually in the right place that you're willing to put in the work and make sure that you're working on the right subject, which is focusing on getting listing. And then, then you, you're gonna get the right outcome. Everything else is a, it's a, doesn't mean anything. So everything I'm sharing with you now is what I do. So that's why I'm sharing with you the way I'm doing. So I'm, I wouldn't say I'm the most hardworking person, but I am pretty hardworking. But I'm hard, I'm working hard on the right task. And I'm working hard. Uh, also, I'm enjoying, I'm taking rest. I'm traveling, I'm taking rest. I'm, I'm balancing myself. So there is a time to work, there's time to play, so that the next day I'm willing to continue to pour, put more hard work. So if you don't do that, if you if you're just gonna work and work every day, you're gonna you, you cannot sustain. Pretty soon, soon or later, your body's gonna give up give up on you, and you're not gonna be able to sustain. It actually happened to me before. Before I realized all this, I was working so hard. I was working twenty four seven. You know, twenty four day twenty four like not twenty four seven, but at least 12, seven, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, no break. But I wasn't making any money. You know, I used to force myself to stay in the office for like 12 hours, but I'm not really working. I'm just like playing on Facebook. You know, it's not how much work, how much hours you put in. 
is that you position yourself in the right mindset so that you're willing actually do the do the actual work that's going to get you the outcome you want any any other questions no, I, I think I have an excuse now to buy a PlayStation and put it in the office and play while I'm yeah, playing football. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Do, a, do whatever that pleases your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, yeah. and Ray, with, um, when, when calling, and I'm, I'm kind of playing with the idea now of getting, after listening to you for the last uh, couple of weeks about getting a power dialer. Yeah. It, now, is this a system that actually tells you when they answer the call, it goes to your phone for your ears and it okay, gives so, you their, their name and the address and everything that pops up on, so on there? The key, the key about uh, uh, power dialing is, is, uh, it's, uh, is in the number. It's the numbers game. You're not going to worry about who you're going to pick up. You're not going to worry about, you know, uh, uh, who to pick up or not pick up. You're not going to worry about who the person is. You're not going to worry about what the home, which city is the home located. You're not going to worry about what kind of property is it. You're not going to worry about what's the price range is it. Not gonna, you're not going to think about any of, the, any of that. All you're thinking about is how can I get to talk to the seller that's wanting to talk to me. That's all you're thinking about. And speed. Did we, did we have a session on cold call before? I think we did, right? The first day. That was the first day. Yeah. First day, yeah. So your, your, your focus is just to get to talk to the seller that's wanting to talk to you as quickly as possible. That's all you care about. So it's basically a, we're using Red X right now. It's basically a computer. It's basically, it's basically a website. It's a web application. So you, once you click dial on the, on the computer, then it's gonna dial your phone. Once it dial your phone, then you click accept on your phone. Then you can click dialing. Then it's gonna start down, dial, dial. So when somebody pick up the phone, you just click leave a message. When somebody, another person, no, when somebody, uh, when nobody pick up the phone, you just click leave a message, leave a message, leave a message, leave a message. Until somebody pick up the phone, then you talk. If they're a seller, then you continue. You, if, they, if they're a seller, you say, hey, uh, are you starting at home? They say yes. Uh, they, they, they tell them, hey, we, we, get, we have 27 buyers that's looking to buy a home in the area right now. When can we take, take a look at the home? Uh, then they say, no, uh, just, bring, uh, just bring me the offer. Then you say, hey, what if I can get you at least 5% more money for your home? Uh, when, can we look at, when can we see your home? Then they say, oh, okay, maybe tomorrow is the rather. Then you put the appointment. Uh, that's it. It's very simple. You just, it's not like you're not trying to chat with the person. You're not trying to do anything. You just book the appointment. That's the goal. Tell them, hey, I have buyers. Tell them, hey, I can get you more money. When can we see the home? That's all you're doing. Just, just, just book it. Uh, anything else? Uh, hang up. No, no chit chatting. No, you know, no, no, like uh, making friends. Nothing. Just, you know, only talk. All you so. Do not get off until you book the appointment. Do not get off until you book the appointment. Uh, appointment. So here's the key. So that's. Telling yourself this is very, this story is very important. This is also a story, right? I will not get off the phone unless I book an appointment today. This is also a story that you're telling yourself. So if you're telling, you, tell, telling yourself this story, you, you're going to book an appointment for sure. I, I, sometimes if the time goes on, like for two hours, three hours, four hours, you do not get an appointment. Sometimes maybe you get discouraged. But as long as you're telling yourself, I'm not going to get a phone, get off the phone unless I book an appointment, then you can push through. Once you push through and sooner or later, you got to book appointment. Once you book the appointment, hang up, go take a break, take a walk, treat yourself, eat ice cream, have a, have a buffet, watch TV, watch a movie, take a walk, whatever you want to, you want to reward yourself right away. Take a break. Yeah. Uh, remember that's, that's not the only way to get leads. Okay. That's just one way. You know, um, so, and also we, remember we talked about last time about uh, um, anything that you do that's working, most likely it's only gonna work for three years the most. After three years, you're gonna have to tweak, tweak a little bit to make it work again. Uh, so right now, I'm, what I'm tweaking now is I'm growing, I'm focused on growing my TikTok. So once I grew my TikTok to a level, then that can become another 
way for me to market. So I'm, I'm adding, so you always got to do this. You always got to figure out a different way to, to, you know, just like Edward was saying, oh, I I'm thinking about doing postcard. So we talked about that, right? You got you to do a different way to, to, to send the postcard a different way, but it takes time. So for example, like TikTok, I'm doing it. Uh, I have some pretty good progress, actually. Now I have a, a thousand followers already. One of my videos, I got like 70,000 views. One video, 70,000 views. I got a viral video. So I'm continuing to grow in it. So once I grew it to enough following, then this will be my ad, another marketing avenue for me to get more business. So you just gotta figure out what's best for you. Uh, what's, what's something you can take action right away. So like we talked about before, right? Don't try to make it perfect. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, some, if somebody tell you, oh, if you're gonna send postcard, you have to, you know, uh, minimum spend $5,000 a month. If that's what you think, if that's what you believe, you're not gonna do it. Because that's, at this point, maybe you cannot do it. You cannot afford that $5,000. Instead, just do it a different way. Like we talked about earlier, right? Maybe, you know, send to postcard to the absentee owners that owns multifamily in this zip code. Then you, you have a much smaller, uh, more focused uh, group. Then instead of sp spending $5,000, you maybe only need to spend $1,000 or $500. Just like we talked about before, before, right? Start with the tiny steps, whatever you can do to get started. For example, for, for George, you're saying, okay, I'm going to call the expire. You don't even need to wait for that. What you can do is just start calling people on your phone or on your WhatsApp, whatever, or on Facebook. Just start talking to 10 people a day. That's, that's just a, a, a tiny step, uh, you know, in relation to talking, in, in getting a platform and the calling expire. Because, because for you to talk to 10 people on Facebook, there's no barrier. The only barrier is yourself. <laughs> but for you to, to call the expire, there's a lot of barrier because you need to think about, okay, which one, which platform should I pick? And then you got to think about, uh, am I wanting to spend this budget of $1,000, $2,000 or, or $500 a month? Then there's a lot of decision for you. So when you have so much, so many decisions before you can actually do it, then you're not going to do it. That's what we're talking about in you know, the baby step. It's so important. Just start with something small. At least get started first. You know, you can talk to some people on Facebook. You don't need to spend any money. It's all free. You already have the people in your Facebook. Just do that. And then I'm telling you, just by doing that, you're going to get business too. You will. Or just, just start by posting on Facebook. I mean, you know, like I, I always wanted to, like George, like Edward, I always wanted to do postcard, but I haven't really got around it yet because number one is the budget is, is really high. Uh, so I, I haven't really, you know, started implementing, implementing my postcard campaign yet, but I started with the baby step. The baby step I started for postcard is that I'm mailing postcard every time my home become pending. So that is much more doable because that's only like, you know, depending on how many I send, that's only like 200, 300, $400. It's not $5,000. But at least it's getting me started. Yeah. It's very important. Take the baby step. Take the baby step. Just get started. Uh, I don't know if this is helpful. Is this whole thing helpful, this, uh, this chart? Yeah, so I'm glad it is helpful for you because uh, um, I thought about this whole chart and uh, for the whole week, and uh, um, for the whole week I, I I was not sure what to put on here. Uh, then I kept thinking, kept thinking, and then last night, you know, around like a two one or two a.m., it finally materialized. Um, it's a uh, if you just follow this, it's gonna work. All you, all you're doing is bridging the gap. You make yourself, you, you position yourself where you're willing to do the work and then you, bring, you, then you bridge the gap. Once you bridge the gap, you're gonna make the commission. Once you make the commission, then you have money to do the investment. So at least for me, that's my ultimate goal. I don't know for you guys, but if you're not, I think it's a good uh, plan for you guys too. 
So, so you want, instead of you being a realtor, just a realtor, you want to also be the investor yourself. Any other questions? Okay, if nothing else, we're gonna uh, finish the meeting today. So right now I'm post I'm so right now I'm posting on TikTok and YouTube. So the reason I'm posting on TikTok is because uh, TikTok right now is like Facebook ten years ago. So it's it everything's free because now if you gotta market on Facebook or YouTube, you gotta pay a lot of money. Now you get the same outcome on TikTok without paying anything. That's why I'm focusing on TikTok right now. And the YouTube is a, you know, it's a good platform. So I'm, I'm, but my primary focus right now is TikTok. So you guys should check it out too. So, um, because, uh, if you focus on TikTok now, you can, you can grow a lot of audience. Uh, once you grow a lot of audience, it's going to be free advertising for you. This is my TikTok account. You can follow me. You can copy what I do. So, um, I'm posting a lot of videos. I'm posting like, uh, sometimes five to 10 Hey, uh, you can follow me and copy what I do. Um, if you're consistent in it, it's gonna get you the, the the following. Once you have the following, then it's gonna it's like a free billboard. Okay, let's say once you have once I have a hundred thousand followers on TikTok, it's like uh, it's the equivalent of me having ten freeway billboards. Just think about how powerful that is. How much you need to pay for ten freeway billboard? That's at least fifty thousand dollars a month for for you to to have advertisement on 10 freeway billboard, so at least $50,000 a month, at least in, in Los Angeles, probably a hundred thousand dollars a month. You gotta pay like maybe at least $10,000 a month for a freeway billboard. Yeah. But once I, once I grew my TikTok account to a hundred thousand people followers, that's the same power as having 10 billboard on by the freeway. Okay, that's it then. Uh, 1125. So it's a pretty good session. Uh, if any, any questions, you can uh, ask in the group. I'm gonna upload the, the flyer I did, I put into the, uh, I did, and also the, the business uh, I used for the, for, for when I go, uh, go to the neighborhood to, to knock on doors. Okay, if nothing else, we're gonna finish the meeting today. Thank you guys. Thanks, Ray. Great meeting today. Thank you. Thank you.